Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, I cannot be with you. And even worse, I cannot show you my presentation, which I prepared because I lost it in an airplane. But anyhow, I would like to talk and therefore I pre uh, prepared another presentation and hopefully you can enjoy it. I'm talking about humans to Mars, but we have to look back first to understand what we are doing. Space 1.0, this was astronomy and is still astronomy, that first method humans tried to escape from our tiny planet. Space 2.0, this was the race in space. And this was between the Soviet Union and United States of America with a well-known result of the first man on the surface of the moon. At that time, there was some, uh, some more race in space. Animals were brought to space. On the American side, it was uh, the monkey ham. On the Soviet side, it was Laika. In Europe, yes, Europe did also something. Europe launched a small cat, Felix said. Originally, it was planned to have a tomcat called Felix to be launched. Unfortunately, this tomcat escaped on the day of the launch. So, Felix said, <laughs> a strong female cat has to take the opportunity. Today, we are in space 3.0. There are steps for global cooperation, like the International Space Station, and also much more space applications than in the past. And what we are doing in space, we are tackling the global challenges. You see here a list. Each and every one of you might have a, a personal priority list, but I think all of them are important. And the last in this list is curiosity. Curiosity is the strongest driver here for humankind to develop the future. And therefore, space is really also covering curiosity because we are, we are providing information we are developing communication, we are doing science, technology, education and inspiration, which is directly linked to the fact of curiosity. ESA has four programmatic pillars to explain what we are doing. The first is science and exploration, the second one is safety and security, the third one are the applications like earth observation, navigation, telecommunication, and the fourth is developing new launches during satellite operations and also to develop new technologies. So this is the day to day, but the future is different. The future is what I call space 4.0. We have a shift of paradigms. Much more actors in space, different motivations, different content, so also the roles of agencies have to be changed and we have new technologies. At the same time, we know that new space, the commercial companies entering into space, we have the Internet of Things, I will not go through all the different aspects, but look to the last one, this is digitalization, including also artificial intelligence. It's clear, and this is uh, proof uh, over decades uh, and centuries, Competition is a trial. Yes, who would run 100 meters in less than 10 seconds without a competition? I would even take my bicycle or my car. But it's also clear at the same time that cooperation is an enabler. Through cooperation we can do things we cannot do alone. And with that I come back to our tiny planet Earth. You see on this picture it's Saturn, but if you have a view on the right hand side of this picture you see the Earth this is our famous spacecraft Earth, the most beautiful uh, planet we know. Unfortunately, we have some issue. We have to take care of our planet uh, to understand what we are doing and to secure the future. ESA has an exploration program called E3P, which stands for European Exploration Envelope Program, and we are covering the destinations Leo, Moon and Mars through the exploration program. In parallel, we have the science program. The science program looks to dark energy, dark matter, black holes, gravitational waves, etc. also in an international partnership. So one destination, of course, is Lower's Orbit, the International Space Station. It's an excellent laboratory for many different types of experiments. In the International Space Station, we are doing material science, we are doing biotechnology, 
But first of all, and this is for me the most important thing, we are doing also medical experiments because they cannot be substituted by robots. You cannot measure the blood pressure of a robot. And that's very clear or to look to osteoporosis, to salt regulation, immune systems. But besides these very clear research activities, there is more because we send astronauts to the station. They come back also with some messages. Here you see the message of Samantha Christopheriti. She shows on the left-hand side of the image the Earth in the very thin atmosphere. You can see the moon and then you see her face. Her face is saying, I'm so glad to be back, to be back on the most beautiful place we know. This is the Earth. Therefore, exploration is not about leaving the planet, but it's to understand the world and then come back. Now, ISS will come to an end whenever that will be. And the advantages of ISS we have to take care of. That means we have to de de define what should be coming after the ISS. Goals and demands uh, about uh, missions. Of course, it is human and robotic, this is clear. Microgravity lab, it's a uh, very important. Fundamental research possibilities, international activities, because we are bridging earthly crisis through the International Space Station. It should be inspiring and useful. It should be science and at the same time development. But very important also, whatever we are doing afterwards, it should be a springboard for future deep space travels. And uh, it should have, from my personal point of view, also an independent access for different actors, so public and private. We should not define new fences in space. And it should be more than a single mission. It should be some sustainable activity and multi-purpose as it is uh, covered by Space 4.0. And based on this, we need two things at the same time, according to my opinion. One is frequent Earth orbit activities, and the other one, international exploration. Now today I'm talking only about the exploration part. The question is where to go next. The next really nice planet might be a little bit far away. But there is no ultimate goal for humans. Oh, humans always go further and farther. So this is the place where it, it is of interest. It's just 39 light years away, so if we today send a message, we are coming, maybe they answer in 78 years, no, we don't want to see you. <laughs> so therefore, this is not the nicest place. Also, looking from the planet situation over there, it's uh, at least it's something where we could say it's uh, similar to the situation of the Earth. Many people therefore say, no, no, let's go first to nearer destinations and maybe the Mars is a nice place to go. I agree. However, to go to Mars is a different, difficult thing. It takes at least something like two years. And if we go to Mars, we have to take care of the propulsion system to come back. We have to take care of safety and security. When I say security, I mean also secured um, communication so that nothing goes wrong with the communication. We have to take care of health two years away from any uh, hospital is, is really a challenge. The psychology, if you look to Mars today from the Earth, you see a tiny red uh, point, a tiny red dot, a red dot in the, uh, in the uh, sky. And the same will happen for astronauts if they are on the surface of Mars and they look back to the Earth, they will not see a blue, shiny blue uh, planet, they will see just a blue dot. So psychology is an issue. And then to be two years out of uh, the very nice Van Allen belt means also to have high radiation. And communication is an issue. Um, Houston, we have had a problem. It's not possible if you go to Mars. It takes too long to find any solution. So some people, because of that, say, OK, let's uh, go to Mars on a one-way trip. Some others are saying, let's go to the moon. The moon, the moon is so close, we can do it uh, in one week to go there and back. Now, to make a one-way trip to Mars, there were some ideas already from some companies. I did not agree and I'm not, never, I, I never supported this one because to live in Cairns on a, a very difficult environment, that's not the one I would like to do. And faster traveling is still not developed, also it might happen later on. So therefore, why not first focus on the Moon? And in this respect, we created this, what is called, multi-partner open concept or short moon village. It is not a, a program of ESA, it is not a mission of ESA, it is not owned by ESA, it is just an open concept where we believe 
that we can do it on an international cooperation. We can go there, human and robotic, public and private, and there can be done a lot of things like exploration, pioneering, but also outreach, not only for science, technology, engineering and math, but also for any other subject, and therefore I call it STEAM. We can do moon science. The moon is really uh, our eighth continent, and it's uh, more or less unknown, only a few places were visited. We can do their cosmology, uh, fundamental research, technology, and of course, finally, it is also a stepping stone to go beyond. What is important for me also, again, the moon should have a free and open access without any hatches, without any fences. And I'm happy that worldwide this uh, activity, this idea, uh, uh, got some uh, attention. And uh, some people were designing in details uh, how it should look like. The shelters for the astronauts built out of moon material. To use moon material to build on the far side of the moon. Also some observatory, radio observatory, to have a deep view into the universe. Some companies are developing uh, communication uh, possibilities uh, to the surface of the moon and also private activities for the uh, exploration of the surface uh, with rovers. Uh, NASA also said yes, we will be, uh, we will join this idea and uh, maybe we are building the streets and roads and my only fear is that then we will have the same speed limits as in the US, so we should not have new limits and new restrictions on this next body. Private industry is joining. So for instance, Elon Musk, who was always saying, let's go first to Mars, is now saying, yes, sir, as a first step, step, moon base would be a good idea. And uh, Jeff Bezos, who announced a few days ago, also his uh, blue moon, uh, was uh, saying some time ago, uh, in 2017 already, let's have a city on the moon. So it's bigger than our moon village, but the idea is the same and therefore I'm very happy. There are several ideas, for instance from a Scandinavian company, how the houses could be on the moon. Of course, this is not what we are intend to do, but to go to the moon and stay there for, uh, so, uh, for a period, not to leave directly, to have some sustainable research done on the surface of the moon, this is what we are looking for. But with the European Service Module and the spacecraft Orion, uh, built in the US and the SLS system. We are part of the journey towards the moon. The Lunar Gateway is a bus stop uh, close by to the moon from where one can either remotely control rovers on the surface of the moon or where one can also go down to the surface of the moon are good steps uh, into the future. And therefore, we are also happy that there is now a discussion about return to the morning moon, but personally I say let's not go back to the moon because that would mean we are copying the same things we did some 50 years ago in competition and race in space. This time we should go forward to the moon with all mankind and of course the one or the other one will be faster or slower, but to do it together and therefore I'm very happy that we are partner of NASA in the joint activity to go to the moon with SLS and the Lunar Gateway as well. Space is more than just uh, some act activity for some space guys. Space is fascinating people. And fascination is a very positive movement in our head. If from fascination we go to inspiration, it's even better than we understand that somebody had an idea and realize this idea and if by that we also we are motivated to have ideas and to do something then we can plan even a better world for the future. So that means to have the dream to go to Mars via Moon this is exactly the type of dreams we the space guys have to deliver in order to fascinate and inspire people so that they are motivated to create a better world. Thank you very much for your attention and next time I hope I can be with you today together. Thank you very much.